Good morning, church. You all came to the Veterans Appreciation Day, but actually this is the church in the woods. And being Sunday, of course, we have church. And uh, the church in the woods, this is what church looks like right here. A bunch of people running around, enjoying each other, fellowship and with each other. We call that a love offering around here. And that's where you shake hands with each other and get to know each other a little bit. But today, we're going to have a special church, if you will. A special gathering. And that gathering is for the sole purpose of honoring our veterans. I wanted to do this last year. In fact, I had it scheduled for March 29th, which I believe was on a Saturday last year, because March 29th is now the National Vietnam Veterans Day. And so I wanted to post that, but then COVID happened. And uh, everybody shut down, we all hid out. All it's that working. kind of stuff. It's working. Uh, but I wasn't able to do it, and I've been irritated for a solid year. Because of the web just wasn't working. So today we're doing it. The all right. Wife I'm on. glad you're all here. I want to welcome you. Uh, to begin our ceremony here today, I'm going to have John. Oh, he's Tom Jimbo, a good friend of mine, and you know, fellow minister of the gospel. He's going to come and give us an invocation. And Tom, would you come? Hope you can hear me. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we know here at Church in the Woods that it wasn't the preacher, the priest, or the pastor that gave us the freedom to worship you in the open in public, to speak your name in public. It wasn't the preacher. It was the veteran. Soldier. And we know that all gave some, some gave all, and many are still giving. And we ask that you lift up those who are still giving, lift up those who are grieving the loss of loved ones that have gone before, lift up those who are still hurting from painful memories of so many years ago. Thank you so much for their service. We don't take it for granted. We ask today that you just make them know that in their heart of hearts. And we ask for Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Excuse me. I want to present to you to start out our ceremony here this morning. I want to present the colors with the Freedom Ranch. Color guard. Color guard. Color guard. Color left. Merch. Color guard. Hold. They're cute. Left face. Present arms. Oh, say, can you see my God's early eye? What so proudly here at the twilight's grand feet, the bright stars and bright stars. Yeah. 
gentlemen, and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our guard, right shoulder, right face, forward march, forward march. Thank you all. We'll be seated. I believe with all my heart that it's important for us to train up children in our values and the way that we want them to us to live. And so I'm honored to work with kids the last month or so. And I particularly appreciate this little color uh, honor guard being formed to honor youth, the veterans, as well as the flag that we stand for. So in speaking of honoring the veterans, I want to recognize those of you that have served in a particular era. So I want to ask, first of all, and this is really kind of a hopeful statement, but do we have any World War II veterans among us today? Kind of what I thought. They're fading fast. They're no longer with us. Those members of the greatest generation who actually fought and died for our freedom. And they pass that legacy on to us. So what about Korean War veterans? Can you stand, here. please? <laughs> Vietnam War veterans. Yes. <laughs> Desert Storm veterans. of those brothers and sisters we've lost over the years from various wars. Will you join me in a silent moment of prayer? Amen. Amen. Right now we're going to have a musical tribute to our veterans. Ed is going to be doing a medley. Now you guys are going to have to pay attention here. Okay. Bruce. <laughs> you guys are going to have to pay attention because when you hear the theme song for your branch of service, you're going to stand up. All right? 
I know mine. Yeah. You didn't recognize even you Air Force sure, guys. I think so. Right on. So, Ed, lead us out. Yeah, a great song, by the way. Well, I want to thank the veterans personally today for the service that they continue to give for what they did. I was pretty fortunate because uh, I was I graduated high school in 1972, and that was just about the time the Vietnam War ended. So I had a lot of friends, a lot of friends that lost their lives here. We had a small school uh, in Midland Park, New Jersey, and so happily, I got a lot of people lost their lives. It's pretty dear to me and honor uh, the veterans. I couldn't serve in the military for uh, physical reasons. But uh, I spent 35 years in the fire service as a first responder. And I just want to, I know that it's a sacrifice, but you guys really sacrificed a lot. And, uh, I want to know you guys today. So I put together this medley. Um, it starts with the Coast Guard. And uh, I had to learn this song because I really never knew what Coast Guard came from. But, uh, it's called Semper Paratus, which means. Always ready. So I'd like to start with that. And what I'm going to do is, as I'm going, as soon as I finish this song, I'm going to announce what the next song is to help you guys out. <laughs> 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 you know, I understand that um, one of the things that you had to learn in boot camp is like, you got to know there's your kitty song, right? So, uh, we'll see. And then, and then I'm finding out to my horror that you guys altered the lyrics a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. Do we have anyone here from the Coast Guard? No. David, I see you up there. We have a couple of questions. <laughs>
Right now, I would normally preach for about an hour. <laughs> well, I know you guys won't be able to stand that. So. We are preaching. Yeah, we're, we're proclaiming the good news here. The good news what God has done for us, we couldn't do for ourselves. Amen. For a thousand lives. And so we're glad you're all here. I'm particularly happy to have Project 425 and the helicopter. Yeah. I also have Vietnam Veterans of America, Okeechobee chapter. Representative. I know behind that, you guys check all this out later, but you've got another tent set up there for the Jupiter Vet Center. Right. Right the founder of the Jupiter Vet Center over here, my brother Raul. <laughs> we also have a lady from, uh, I'm sorry, I remember, her name is Diana, I believe that. Her name is Diana, she's from Humana, she's got a, a table set up over there as well. And so we've got some of the stories for you all to take a look at. I'm to uh, visit with these folks afterwards. We've got several things planned today uh, for you. Uh, after our ceremony here today, we've got a, a lunch put on by Alpha Ministries, uh, their famous barbecue pork. <laughs> well, Casey, I know you like it. Yeah, we'll have lunch for you. Everybody's invited to that. And then afterwards, there's going to be a little live music out here. We've got a Vietnam veteran that's going to play for us here a little bit. And we'll also have an arena show uh, over in the arena. And we'll, we'll show you how to get over there in a minute or in a little while. And, um, Kids are putting on an arena show. Now, every year, this by the way is our 10th anniversary of, of the Veterans Appreciation. Raul was the one that's responsible for that. He was counseling me and said, You ought to do a Veterans Appreciation Day at Freedom Ranch. And he helped me do it and we got with it. But this is our 10th anniversary, not counting last year. And, uh, every year we have an arena show. Now, Sometimes the arena show is more of a comedy than a rodeo, <laughs> but the kids are growing up now, and that means they can actually rope a cat. <laughs> so uh, you guys will have fun watching that over there in the bleachers. That'll be around 2 o'clock this afternoon, so I want you just to be at home. I want you to uh, be easy with yourself and everybody else just relax and have a good time. But right now, I want our special speaker today to come forward. This is Sergeant Major J.T. Winborn. J.T., come up. Uh, he's not dressed in his, his uniform, although, he, and he doesn't meet uniform standards because he's going to be retiring here uh, at the end of uh, September, right? September, yeah. September 30th. So he'll be retiring. Let me just read a little biography to you, okay? So you know who this guy is. J.T. Winburn was born and raised in Davenport, Iowa in 1967. That makes him 53, in case you want to. <laughs> Dad and Sandy Winburn. His father, a 1964 West Point graduate, switched over to the Air Force, became a pilot, and flew two tours as a C-130 pilot in Vietnam. He had two uncles who also served a tour in Vietnam. From 1985 to 88, J.T. joined the military after graduating high school where he served as an Army Airborne Ranger with the 3rd Ranger Battalion located in Fort Benning, Georgia. And in 1989 to 91, he attended the University of Iowa but dropped out of college due to the war in the Gulf, Desert Storm. 
1991 to 2009, he joined the Special Forces Green Beret. But because the Special Forces Qualification Course is almost two years long, he missed serving in the Gulf War, but decided to stay on active duty, where he was sent to the 10th Special Forces Group Airborne, located in Fort Carson, Colorado, where he served as a Communications Sergeant, Operations Sergeant, Special Forces Team Sergeant for four combat tours in Iraq. 2010 to 2011, he was assigned to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to be the HHC Headquarters Company First Sergeant at the United States Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School, also serving two months in Afghanistan as an intelligence and targeting officer. 2012, he attended the United States Army Sergeant Majors Academy in Fort Bliss, Texas. 2013-2014, he was assigned as the A Company 1st Battalion 10th Special Forces Group Sergeant Major located in Stuttgart, Germany, where he led a Special Forces Company in a nine-month combat tour in Afghanistan. 2015-2017, he was assigned to NATO Special Operations Headquarters located in Shape, Belgium, as the J-7 Exercises and Assessments Sergeant Major. 2018, as the present, he was assigned the U.S. Special Operations Command located on McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida, where he lives with his wife, Healy, and, and married, by the way, 22 years, and two daughters, Lena and Andy. JT will retire on September 30th of this year, with over 32 years of service in the U.S. Army Special Operations. Welcome, Can you set him up the mic up there? I was going to make him we use the land cover to make him voice. So I thought I might, but I think the microphone would be better. Okay, after that, uh, man, I, man, I'm looking around for who is this guy? <laughs> and my, my body feels every year that he spoke about there. But uh, hey, first of all, let me, uh, I wanted to thank John Glenn for having me speak to you today and then also the Boney family uh, for putting on this event. Uh, this is the second time I've been down here, but uh, this is great. You're a great bunch of people, and I personally want to thank you for your service. Um, give yourselves a round of applause. Please. Okay, so, you know, I had a speech, but my daughters told me if I start to drag it out too long, they'll start throwing rocks at me, so I'm going to bounce between that, and I'm not going to talk too long. Um, uh, basically, John said just to get up here and tell my story. Well, you've heard most of my military career. I mean, it's, it's been all in special ops, and I've been very honored to, to be with those guys, and, uh, you know, I feel very fortunate to be standing up here. A lot of my friends, my wrist here are not with us just like a lot of yours and so uh, you know i think this is a day to remember them and uh, you know and their families because it's a very difficult thing to go on uh, after you're missing a loved one like that um i guess basically uh, what i would like to do though is uh, uh say how many uh i know we just kind of saw it but how many guys raise your hand if you're in the army okay the air force all right Marines, Navy, we had one or two Coast Guard, we <laughs> have any Space Force. Because you're going to have to add that to your song, okay? I mean, and I'm at, as a personal kind of tick with me because they decided USSF, for me that's US Special Forces, that's US Space Force to them, and so we're kind of unhappy about that. You're going to have to learn another song, unfortunately. You start to see veterans at some point. My daughter actually is thinking about going into space, and I thought nobody could top jumping out of airplanes, but I said I won't do that. <laughs> so anyway, let me introduce my family. I, I've got my wife and two daughters here. My wife, Ellie, in the back. Please stand up. I can't get them. 
the uh, two beautiful daughters of that winner who's the whole team of all the Gators. Hey, Gators! The only scholarship is a winner, and then uh, my high schooler is 17, Annie. And her ex-boyfriend keeps putting tires, or nails in her tires, so I have to talk to him sometime this week. Uh-oh! So I got that going for him. But uh, anyway, uh, talking about my family a little bit. My wife, Kelly, and I, interesting story, I met her in Bosnia. I was doing the Special Forces mission back when Bosnia was going on. And she, believe it or not, pretty redhead that she is, is a uh, Finnish police officer. And she was down there working for the International Police Task Force. <laughs> so, I, I, that was the last thing I went to Bosnia to do was meet my future wife. But, uh, <laughs> you know, pretty, pretty incredible story. And uh, ever since then, she has been my love and support, and I can't thank her enough. And you all know what I'm talking about. I mean, I would not be standing here if it was not for her holding down the fort back home. So uh, thank you so much. Um, you know, and, and tell you all the while. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Your families really are the unsung heroes of uh, the U.S. military, and I don't think they get enough praise. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, pretty much my whole career I spent in special ops. I started out with the Army Rangers there in Fort Benning, Georgia. Got out to go to college, and as you heard, I, I kind of bailed. I kind of bailed at the first chance I had. I wasn't really into the studying so much. So when Desert Storm kicked off, I thought, here's my chance. Well, the Special Forces Q course is two years long, and so by the time I got through that, yeah, the war was over and I was kicking stones thinking, now what do I do? So I just decided to stay in. And I'm really glad I did. I mean, it's like it's been a very fruitful career for me. I mean, I made Sergeant Major and you know, now I'm at the downward, downward swing of that. I've got six months left and I actually walked by my boss the other day and he didn't recognize me. <laughs> well, this, this whole COVID thing, so uh, quite a few of us, because, you know, bases have also said, hey, we're going to actually, uh, in, unless you're must-have in the office, we have to trim the, the, the numbers down. So I was not must-have anymore, starting about, I don't know, a little over a year ago, actually. So I was put out the pasture, and I said, well, hey, if I don't have to come into work, I'm going to must-have. <laughs> so I did that, and like I said, I saw my boss the other day, and he's like, hey, wait a minute, I didn't approve that. And I said, well, my wife's my boss now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, it's been a wonderful career, and uh, I, I just, you know, I never thought that uh, I would be standing up in front of a crowd such as yourself. I'm very honored to be here. and. Uh, uh, after 32 years of service and a little over uh, speaking to you today, but uh, you know, I also didn't realize that the world was going to be quite like it is right now. And uh, one thing that I did want to touch on, without getting on a political soapbox, but I do feel right now our job as veterans is very important. I mean, yeah. we need to be the voice that does not seem to be heard right now. I mean, Amen. People like myself, I got six words. I got six words until I'm out, but I can tell you what, I mean, it, this is not the America that we grew up in, and it is definitely not being driven towards the place we want to go. You know, those of you who have served, we've been down range, and we know what it means to be around corrupt governments, and we know what it means to not have law enforcement to enforce the laws, and we need that more than ever. And I don't, I don't understand who's pushing this agenda, but I can tell you this: we veterans need to stop that. We need to be this voice, and you know, whether it's on you know, your local diner, your street corner, or placing a call to our state representatives, we need to make our voice heard. You know, we fought for this country. We have friends that have died for this country, and we need to turn this around. You are not. Just You, you as a veteran, you are not just another vote. You are not just another person with an opinion. You know, you have 
push blood, sweat, and tears out of that body of yours for what we, you know, the life that we lead today. And it needs to stay that way. And it's, and it's guaranteed by our U.S. Constitution that some find just a, another sheet of paper. So, you know, I don't want to talk any further on this, but we need to be that voice people with. It, it, I, I just can't, I don't know who else is going to do it. You know, my friends and co-workers right now, if you're in the military, they're kind of being stifled, you know, and they can, you know the military, they can come down on you if you get political. So they can't do it. Okay? Veterans are the ones that need to do it. And, uh, you know, in six months, I'm going to be that guy, and I'm definitely going to get out there and probably bruise a few egos and a few feelings, but the reality is, you know, this country we have is by thing. far the best in the world. And we've got to keep it that way. And it, it really is going to take us to fully understand that and make it known to the people who have had it so good that don't understand. So anyway, um, God bless all of you and God bless America. But thank you for listening to me. But thank you. Uh, I neglected to tell you that this is all of JT's stuff over here. Okay, so he brought his kit with him. And then, uh, you don't know what that means. This is all the equipment that modern warriors use. Now, for us old governors, you know, we look at that and say, what's that for? <laughs> I don't even know if I could be able to put that on, much less look at it. <laughs> um, but JT is graciously going to be available here to uh, explain what all he's got here, the use of it, and that sort of thing for anybody that's interested. So that's, that's another display we've got. Uh, also, our Coast Guard man, and son of, uh, not a son-in-law. <laughs> Anyhow, he's got the helmets out here. Look at them. Okay, they show the different stages of the military uh, as you go by. So, all we've got planned now for the rest of the day Just is food. to eat. <laughs> and to we'll leave the music on. have a little show, an arena show over here. So before we do that, I want to share just a few words with you about what a veteran is. I don't know if you can see it from up here, but a veteran is someone who at one time in his life wrote a check to America. And that check said, pay to the order of America any price. Up to and including my life. To keep America free is a memo. Signed, American Veterans. Amen. You guys, you need to realize that whatever branch of service you were in, whatever job, MOS, military occupation, you served in. You sign that check at any time. Now why would you do that? I want to talk about the motivation for a moment. Some of us were young and dumb. <laughs> when we signed that check. Some of us were drafted when we sign that check. Some of us What an adventure. You either had to go to jail or go in the army. <laughs> when we sign that check. Oh, you're new. You see, the reality is there's a whole different bunch of different reasons why men and women go into the military. Thankfully, the draft is over and our military became all volunteers. 
changed drastically. From the time I was in to the time now, there's drastic changes. The thing that impresses me the most about the drastic changes is the changes in gear, like this. And the changes in sophisticated weaponry that protects the best. But it comes back down to, why do you serve? I know I learned a lesson throughout my lifetime. When I came back after serving in Vietnam, I had a mission while I was there, flying one of those helicopters there. I wasn't the pilot, I was a medic sitting in the back, picking up wounded soldiers and taking them to the hospital, wounded civilians take them to the hospital. And our mission in dust off was so that others may live. Amen. So when I got back, I just converted that mission to civilian life. Did you know that? I still operate under the same mission. Now you veterans are still operating under the same mission that you had while you were in. And there's a glue that holds you together in that mission that won't let you stray from it. And that glue is called love. Jesus put it this way, Greater love hath no man than he laid down his life for his friend. Greater love hath no man than he signed that check. You got to sign it. And demonstrate it. the glue that holds not only the military but our nation together. Unfortunately, that love has been systematically over the years being replaced with hatred. People hating each other because they're not like them. The escalating violence in the streets illustrate that hatred. There's a whole new generation coming up that's oppressed by that hatred. Martin Luther King Jr. said there's only one solution to hatred. You can't legislate it away. You can't even blow it away with sophisticated weapons. The only solution to that hatred is love. Amen. Love that comes from a divine source. It causes a man or a woman to be willing to break that natural self-centered tendency we're all born with, that natural selfishness that thinks only about us and what's in it for me, and allows us the freedom, the true liberty to care about other people. I have a saying around here, Church in the Woods, I call it the critical event. And I don't know how many of you guys are out here. I know a lot of you are visiting with us today, but I know there's a bunch of you here that I see all the time on Sundays, at least once a month. <laughs> and I know by now you know what that critical event is, so I want you to yell it out. What is the critical event around here? Oh. Love one another. That's the critical event. No matter what goes on. No matter what kind of music we have, no matter what kind of pomp and circumstance we have, no matter what kind of ceremony we have, the critical event is that you all love each other. That you all care about each other. That you lay down your life for each other. JT knows about this. Because you can't serve in a team 
special forces team without that bomb being developed. Those of you who've been in the military, particularly downrange and stuff, you know there's a bond that should never be broken. Do you know what that bond is? Look, that's what it is. So your bond as veterans continues today. A love that glorifies your father. God. So it's not just our country we serve, but we serve our Heavenly Father as well. And I honor you in that today. I thank you for that. I'm going to close here with a word of prayer. And then we're going to systematically go up. Now, I used to say when we, when we served lunch here on Sundays, I used to say, anybody older than me goes first. Okay. But I see too many of you. <laughs> So I'm, I'm just going to turn you loose and you can form up lines going in either side of the, the hall up there and there's a door that will be open. You can go in either side. Be two lines if you serve. We do have tables set up on the inside for those of you that feel more comfortable in there. Um, and the rest of you are going to have to spill out here and eat the dirt. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate each one of you being here and honor you. Let's pray together. Father God, as we come to your presence this morning, I thank you particularly for the love that you've given to us that we might share with one another. Father, I thank you for the liberty that you gave us in your son Jesus to be able to sacrifice our lives one for another and for our nation, for our country. And Father, I ask you now to continue to use us and that's the only love we have to serve our nation as we serve one another. For these things I pray in Jesus' name. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you can bless in grace what you cursed under the law, bless this pig. Amen. 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 <laughs> Dismissed.